Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm going to take a little look at the Smart Pro that just come out. You can kind of see a shot of it right there. There it is on my dirty bench. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty neat little machine. It, it, it doesn't have to be plugged into an air compressor. It has its own air compressor inside there. Um, and what's pretty cool about it is that it also has a micro motor built into it. And they both run on the same pedal. To, so to go from the engraving handpiece to the micro motor, you're just going to flip a switch right there and um, it'll switch back and forth. So uh, the, the approach to this wasn't, is this as good or is it better or is it, you know, in comparing it to the other machines that are in the marketplace right now. That, that wasn't my point. Uh, what I wanted to do is, will it do what it says it'll do? And is it made with some sort of quality? Well, on the quality side, unpacking it from the box, I, I was pretty impressed. It's obvious that they were trying to make a quality product. Everything's tight. It's not some little lightweight, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a beefy machine. And um, so the next million dollar question is, will it do what it says it can do? And the only logical way I know to do that is just to kind of put it through the test. Uh, now, I've had a good chance to play with the micro motor, and it seems pretty gosh darn good. Uh, and I'll make a video on that later. And I think where this machine finds its home is with the jewelry makers. I think that's where it's really going to be strong. With stone setting, uh, the addition of the micro motor is going to make it really, really handy, um, you know, for drilling your holes and using your burrs and things like that. And western style engraving it handles quite well and we're going to do a video on that and kind of take it through the paces but obviously since the majority of my work tends to land with relief style engraving and kind of on the gum side of things it only made sense to start there and um, that's what we did now they've got a little bit of information on the machine out on youtube so far but just to give you the quick rundown you don't have to do anything to it but plug it into electricity everything's in this self-contained box that weighs more than you would think it would weigh it's uh not bad really I, i'm quite impressed with it the hand piece is i got some lights going on here the the hand piece is machined out of stainless steel and again i'm not going to compare this to the other machines on the market because it's a different technology the 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 engineering that makes it hit the chisel is not the same as the other one. So it would be comparing apples to oranges. My focus is simply, does it do what it says it'll do? And um, I have to tell you that I wasn't given this machine. I have to buy it and um, I'm pretty happy to have it. So um, let's dive in and look at my goofy rough little video of, you know, putting it through the paces a little bit. So in engraving and trying to remove some of the background uh, that you're going to need to make your cavity to inlay your wire in, uh, I thought it did pretty good. And then the next test was, hey, how's this thing going to hold up uh, doing undercuts and stuff? And the material that I'm engraving right there is carbon steel. That's uh, a grip cap for like a, like a gun. And um, just kind of going through some of the things that pertain to what I do on a daily basis. And um, just about all of my projects are going to require inlays and, you know, background removal, things like that. So this is an actual project. So I thought, hey, let's turn the cameras on and let's check this thing out. Um, there's some advantages that I think to how slow the stroke speed can be. 
um, it lends a little bit of control. There's some places that I think it shines pretty good. Uh, raising birds is one of those places. It was it was a pleasure to to raise the birds with. It really was, and uh, plenty of punch, plenty of power. It comes with two pistons that you can swap it out, the big one and the little one. I'm just using the big one. And, um, you know, it's not an overly complicated, complex handpiece. It's pretty simple. Uh, but, you know, simple things tend to keep on working. And the next question, obviously, is, hey, can this thing hammer in the wire? And I opted to use silver uh, just because most of us know that uh, gold is really, really soft anyway. And... Sometimes silver can be problematic, but it, it was fine. It handled it just fine. Um, the hand piece was comfortable to work with. And, um, you know, sometimes seeing is believing. So I just thought I'd make a video of, you know, the darn thing working. And um, I've got some projects coming up where I'm going to set some stones and some rings and some stuff like that. And we'll get to stretch the legs of the micro motor a little bit. Uh, I have used it on a few things, and it seems pretty good as well. And the moral of this story, I think, is, you know, the right person for this machine is, you know, small shop, air compressors, not very convenient. I want to make jewelry, which is going to require the use of a flex shaft for polishing and drilling holes and setting stones and all of that. And hey... You know what? I'm going to need to do some engraving too. And this is kind of an all-in-one machine that I think is good for that. Um, like I said, this machine wasn't given to me. I had to purchase it. And um, I'm not unhappy with the purchase. Um, its strong suit is going to be just a good all-around machine that you can do a lot of different things with. And... Um, for the price point that this machine's coming into the market with, it's not a bad thing to have on the bench. Again, no air compressor and you have the micro motor. And I keep mentioning micro motor, which seems weird for an engraver, but stone setters and myself, more and more of my engraving work, I'm leaning on the micro motor to sharpen my tools with. Um, it's the easiest thing to sharpen an angolette with and that my undercut chisels and things like that, I can freshen them up with the micro motor so it's really convenient. Um, obviously, I had to jump in there and cut a little bit of scroll work with it. And you can hear from the machine that, it, that it's got a slower tap and it's really going to give you a feel of kind of almost hammer chisel engraving. Now, it will run faster than that. I just chose to engrave with it at that speed. And for some, the ability to really, really slow down around corners and turns is going to be an advantage. It's going to be a benefit to some people. I've been engraving for a long time. I really don't care how fast it's going. Um, but I think that's a problem for some people. And um, all in all, I, I, think, I think the machine more than does what it claims that it's going to do. And, and while it's not the only tool on my bench, I am happy to, to have one. I, uh, I don't regret it at all. And I could talk on forever, but what you're looking at is just me doing normal work that I would do on a daily basis using the Smart Pro Air Do X. Uh, that's... Um, I think probably the most convenient place to get it is going to be Pepe Tools, and um, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a good addition to their lineup, and I think the jewelry engravers that are setting stones and turquoise bezel cups and things like that, I think it's really really going to shine for y'all because it has a small footprint on the bench, and you don't have to run an air hose anywhere. I tried to fatigue the machine, in other words, use it hard enough that it just kind of ran out of gas, so to speak, and it never did. It kept up just fine, and, and that makes sense because the air compressor in it doesn't actually have or store air. It's the stroke of the piston in the compressor that 
has a direct effect on the piston and the handpiece. Therefore, it's, it's an immediate exchange of energy, so you wouldn't need any storage in a tank. And then, of course, um, again, not, not, not all jewelers need to remove background and things like that. This was just kind of a, okay, if I got this machine to do jewelry with and decided I wanted to do some of the other stuff, can I do it with this machine also? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to explore with it some more. I'm going to play with it some more. Um, it kind of checked all of my boxes as far as power and background removal and will it hammer in inlays and things like that. Um, jewelers and people that make cowboy stuff, belt buckles and things like that. Um, I think this machine is going to do a good job accommodating them and it's offered at a price where you can get some of those other things on your shopping list checked off. You know, for, for those of us who are not just engravers, we're also makers, we build things. Uh, there's always a long shopping list of tools you want to get and this might be an opportunity where you could get the micro motor and the engraver taken care of and then spend some, some more of your money on a different tool, something else that's on your list. Uh, I'm not a big dot punch guy, but you know, you gotta try it. I had to give it a go. And uh, you can see my little smart aleck comment on the corner of the screen. But uh, it's a thing, it's a traditional thing. It's just not something that I do much of. And since the dot punches are few and far between now, uh, everybody's went to bead set tools, which is what I'm using there. And then, of course, if you remove background and you can't stipple, it's useless. So, uh, you know, got to give a go at stippling. And it handled the job pretty good. This is where I actually expected it to run out of air, but it, it handled it just fine. And then shading. Um, single point shading seems to be what's most popular nowadays. So, you know, why not try that? When we do the... Uh, when we stretch its legs on jewelry, we'll do some shading with the liner tool and some things that are a little bit more bright cut. And again, I'm, I'm not comparing it to the other machines in the market. I'm just simply seeing, will it do what it says it will do? And the answer seems to be yes. And everybody has different needs and different budgetary requirements. And this will give you some information, hopefully, to allow you to make a more informed decision over whether this machine is going to fit the bill for you or not. Um, in our industry, we have a lot of great equipment and there's no one size fits all. So you just kind of got to determine what are my needs and then you can satisfy them from there. So anyway, that was just putting the machine through a little you know putting it through the paces so to speak and um yeah i i think it's a i think it's a pretty cool little machine and um i'm glad to have it on my bench now granted i have just about every tool toy and whistle that you can get and the interest on this machine was will this kill two birds with one stone and i think for a lot of people it will so anyway, hope that helps.